17th century Spanish still lives were known for being austere and mysterious compared to Dutch paintings at the time. The artist Juan Sanchez Cotan embodies the essence and demonstrates the stylistic techniques from this era. Cotan was a Spanish Baroque artist who pioneered realism in Spain. As opposed to similar pieces from the Netherlands and Italy, his still life paintings were known for being very rigid and technical. Before he joined a monastery, Cotan also painted religious subjects, although none were as groundbreaking and revered as his still lifes. In these still lives, Cotan made the background a niche or window which was used to create an unspecified setting. It created a sense of mystery that the Dutch lacked at the time. His pieces showcase brightly lit fruits, vegetables, and hanging birds. The subjects are seen against a black background which comes from the style of tenebrism. Still Life with Game Fowl is made by duplicating the previous painting, Quince, Cabbage, and Cucumber. Because of this, Still Life with Game Fowl is one of his more controversial pieces due to the dispute over whether it was painted from life or not. However, as it turns out, the inventory for 1603 did include four game birds. The meaning behind these pieces is undetermined, but it is possible that in his 11 still life paintings, the subject matter was meant to be interpreted as offerings to the Virgin. This alludes to the Virgin as the window to heaven and an origin of spiritual food to devout individuals. Though they weren't the only still life artists, the Dutch gave the genre its name still even, which means quiet life or inanimate model. Clara Peters was a 17th century still life artist from Holland who laid the groundwork for artists such as Peter Klaas. She is one of the most well-known female Flemish artists at the time when very few women were professional artists. She was known for her portrayals of flowers and food together, along with still lifes of bread and fruit called breakfast pieces such as still life with flowers, goblet, dried fruit, and pretzels. She was also revered for her banquet pieces, which contained expensive drinking glasses and precious metal vessels. Her subjects were usually painted against a dark background, erasing all sense of depth and space. In this specific piece, she drew further attention to depth in the foreground with the placement of the leaves and flowers on the stone ledge. At the time, food was abundant in the Netherlands, which served as her subject matter and aided in her portrayal of great feasts and meals. Most Dutch Baroque artists, including Peters, depict the growth and prosperity of the Dutch middle class. Although it may seem as though Dutch paintings only represent the higher class and their emphasis on worldly possessions, symbolism is often used and the paintings also have hidden meanings. In 17th century Holland, Bonita's still lives were introduced as a new genre based on Dutch Protestantism. Bonita's was just one of the many subgenres of still life paintings, like the aforementioned breakfast piece, flower piece, and pronkstelieven. Out of all of these, Bonita's was the most complex and misunderstood. The newfound wealth of the 17th century opposed the Protestant teachings, so these paintings were used as a deterrent from vices and sin. During this time, Dutch provinces were at war with Spain from 1568 to 1648. Holland had become severely overpopulated and they suffered through the worst plague in their history. Because of this, people started to become more conscious of their own mortality. The purpose of the Vanita still lives is to make the viewer reflect on the shortness and fragility of life as well as on the vanity of worldly possessions. Death and vanity were very common topics in Dutch artwork, but especially in Vanitas. Vanitas itself means emptiness, utility, or worthlessness in Latin. Each of the elements in the painting serve as a memento mori, or reminder of death. They allude to the passage of time in something that was here but is now gone. In Glass's painting, he emphasized the idea of time by adding a self-portrait reflected in the ball on the left. This was likely done as a way to immortalize the artist. Usually these paintings appear to be on a scholar's work table and include things like skulls, books, manuscripts, and extinguished candles. 
Many also add bottles, plates, clocks, and musical instruments. The skull was used as a symbol of what remains after time has run out and began its process of decay and destruction.